What's up guys, ATCG here, welcome back. Today we're going to discuss the ban list since the last YCS of the year has come to a close and we're not going to have any major events until 15th of January when we're supposed to get our next list. We're going to discuss how Konami should approach the next list and you use a kind of a weird situation right now. The format is diverse, which is a good thing, but people complain about it being stale and that's not the ban list's issue to solve because no matter what Konami does in the next list, we're still going to have the exact same format with just the top decks being weakened, but still being the top decks. The problem is that Konami, for some reason, is unwilling to print any new tier 1 decks. We have so many decks in these core sets, like Marinces or Unchained, that fill up all the secret rare slots in the sets, but these decks can't do anything, and no matter what Konami does in the next list, these decks are not going to become meta. We're still going to be in the same format. So I think the best way to approach this ban list is to try to level down the power level of the best decks so that more decks can rise to have the potential to combat the format. But don't think that we're going to see a new format. Don't think that this next ban list is going to make Orcast, Sky Striker, and Solomon Great, or all these decks that you're used to seeing disappear. No, they're still going to be here. They're still going to be the best decks. It's just that you will have a better chance to fight against them with whatever deck you feel like playing. So that's how I'm going to approach this list. And I think that's what Konami should do as well, because we know the products in the future. Still, we're not going to get any new tier one decks. Addict and Easter are not that good. Konami just settles with giving us good staple cards instead of giving us a new tier one deck. So let's begin. I will skip the ban section. I've got nothing there. That means that we're in a pretty good format right now. So let's go to the limited section. I'm going to start with Orcas because I think Orcas is the only deck that needs to be settled down because we've in the past events it has been getting consistently around 50 percent of their top card representation which is still huge for just a single deck uh, they have just um split it between sky striker orcast and pure orcast but i don't see the reason to do that because it's still orcast so just combine both of them and see that like they have 16 out of 32 slots in the top card every single time so i'm going to put galatia and harp horror to one uh, I'm a big fan of not banning any archetype-specific cards, so that's why I tried to give a different approach to the deck. This approach is a bit weird because you will think that this changes nothing for the early game because they only use one Galatia during the combo, like to finish with Muscarina, Babel, and being able to use Dingirs and Unicorn during a bonus turn. Yes, that changes nothing, of course. You're going to see the same exact combo. What it changes is the grind game of the deck because with only one Galatia, you have to use your simple skeleton to bring her back if you want to put back your resources in the deck and get another spell and trap, or you have to pick whether you want to bring back Dingirsu to be able to deal with an opponent's card, so you'll have to play more Dingirsu in the extra deck, you'll have to play three, so you can keep recycling that one Galatia back with Symbol Skeleton, and also putting Harp Horror to one means that you'll have less targets for Orchestrated Return, less targets for Allure of Darkness, you will have less normal summons in the deck because sometimes the sky striker engine supports normal summoning a harp horror so you can do your full combo but if you have only one harp horror you will be forced to play three orcas nightmare but orcas nightmare is level seven so you cannot normal summon it and if you have not if you don't, if you don't have harp horror in your hand you're forced to summon a mathematician or a scrap recycler then maybe a single veiler will be enough to put a stop in your turn. And because your Scrap Wyvern is a card that's coming out really soon, I think the deck needs to be checked because you're going to see in this uh, time period where Scrap Wyvern will be out and the ban list will still not be here, that there, the deck is going to keep evolving. It's going to be even more powerful on top of your Mascarena. Being used to classic play, you, they might also be able to summon an Apollosa with Scrub Wyvern. So yeah, I think the deck is going to be out of control pretty soon. They need to check it as soon as possible. People say that it should not get hidden. No, that's completely wrong. If there's, a, if there's one deck that needs to get hit in the next list, it's Orcast. Leave everything else, but just hit Orcast. But I'm going to hit two more decks in this list to make sure that the deck, the level, the playing field is leveled down. And the next limited card is not an archetype specific card. It's just a card that I think limits the ability of Konami to print new decks, and that's there can be only one, because there can be only one gives free wins to decks like Sky Striker and True Draco, yes, but that's not the problem, because it's not as generic as like a card like Vanity's Emptiness. The problem is that all these new decks that keep coming out, they have one type. Marine Cessonatic Gnosis are Cybers, 
on my thing and chains are fiends. So if you want to print a new deck and you have like card like this in the format, it makes people second think about if they want to actually play a mediocre deck but loses to a single card like this one. So I think just for future purposes, there can be only one shit put to one. It will be kind of a psyche one-off, but still not as consistent as it is now with Citadel 3. And I'm going to keep saying this until it actually happens. Zodiac Dryden should come back to one. Zodiacs were broken. Yes, I can see that. But Konami just wanted to banhammer them to the point that they were sure that the deck was not going to be playable again. But Dryden never had to be banned. Broadbull was the problem. It was keep searching your advantage every single turn. It was generic, so you could use like an splashable engine for Beast Warriors and stuff like that. But Dryden was just like... A Pretty mediocre disruption, and if you only have one Dryden, you cannot keep bringing back more Drydens with Chaka 9 so you can have more on the field, so you can have multiple pops. So just one, I think, is completely fine. Zodiacs are one of those decks that, after the ban list, are completely unplayable. It's the only deck reminiscent of Dragon Rulers where it just completely butchered it. So I think if you put Dryden back to one, you give the deck just a little bit more to have. Nothing too special. It's not going to be tier one, trust me. So I think it's a safe thing to do. Now let's go to the semi-limited, and this is where things get interesting. These two decks I'm going to talk about, they're not unfair, not to any point. They're just the two decks following Orcast. In representation, they don't have that much, but they're still more than all the others, excluding Orcast, of course. And that's Salaman Great and Sky Striker. So with Salaman Great, Sunlight Wolf should go to two. It's a minor hit for the deck. Again, it changes nothing for the early game, just like with the Orcast hits. It just helps the other players be able to grind a bit more because if your opponent gets rid of your Jaguars and you're not be able to get back your Sunlight Wolves and you won't be able to reincarnate. And the Solomon, Solomon Great's power is being able to get back all its trap cards every single turn so you can uh, generate all that advantage and disrupt your opponent every single time. So that's why Sunlight Wolf to two is a decent hit. It won't kill the deck. No, I'm not putting it to one. That would kill the deck. But yeah, I think it's a really good hit. And Mobilize Engage. People should just stop complaining about Engage that much. The only reason Engage was incorporated in Orcast is because the pure Orcast people thought it was weak to hand traps. And Sky Striker, of course, the deck is a bit lackluster now with one way to anchor. So if you just combine the best two engines in the game to one single deck, yes, of course it will work out. Of course the deck will be broken. But the combined hits of everything that I just mentioned. If Sky Striker Orcas wants to be played after that, they will have to realize that there will be a lot more bricks in the deck and a lot more dead hands because you play your engages, yes, but when you have cards like Widow Anchor or Shark Cannon, if you hard draw these cards, depending on the scenario, they might not be that good because sometimes you just want your drones in your hand. You don't want a Shark Cannon or you don't want a Widow Anchor, but if you have two engages, you're not going to get to it that consistently and you might draw your Shark Cannons or Widow Anchor instead so that's a good thing to keep in mind when you're building a deck if these hits actually happen. And of course, with the uh, Orcas hits, they will have um, not that powerful of a grind game. And as far as pure Sky Striker goes, yes, the deck can still compete. Yes, the deck is still really good because it's an amazing toolbox. It has the tools to deal with anything. The problem is it relies on back row. So keep in mind, in Ignition Assault, we're getting Lightning Storm, which is Harpy's Feather Dust 2.0, which will be a 3 off. So... So, uh, Sky Striker will have to incorporate three Solemn Dazzle in the main deck, or they'll just get blown out by cards like Lightning Storm or cards like Evenly Matched and Twin Twisters. And these two cards I just mentioned will become more relevant if Orcas get taken out of the picture because Orcas kind of doesn't care about these two cards that much. And yeah, it also relies on there can be only one, which if it goes to one, like I said, the deck will have even less power to deal with. It's just like it uses the Sky Striker engine to protect its back row, which doesn't feel like that much of a Sky Striker deck. And the only thing that's still unfair about Sky Striker is when it starts resolving three to four engages its turn. So if you have two, not only do you, do you hit that, but you also hit the consistency of the deck and the splash ability of the engine. And the last card I have I'm going to do is Necros of Unicor. Konami tries to push Necros here and there. Sure, it has come back to three, but that doesn't change anything. Some decks don't even play Sure, it's not as good and important as it used to be. But Necros of Unicor, of course, it's probably one of the best, if not the best card in the deck. So try putting it to two, see where it goes. I don't think the deck will do much. Maybe you can put it to three afterwards. It can lock down some decks, but it's not the most consistent way of locking them down. But uh, yeah, I think Necros, we've seen that it doesn't do anything, at least not in the most competitive level. So a little bit more help because you're helping some dolls with a structure deck. Just keep bringing back some more of those old decks because if you don't want to print any new good decks for whatever reason, 
at least give us more variety from the old decks that we know are good if put in the correct environment. And now for the unlimited section, four cards, four cards that I don't think will change that much. Maybe one card will help a deck be a little bit better. But let's start with Dark Arm Dragon. It went back to two. Uh, the OCG has it a three. The card is not what it used to be. The card is completely fair right now. You don't even get to search it because a cool Fiber is banned. So yeah, I think that at three is really good. Damajackler, it's a two. Put it to three. The engine is not broken anymore. People do not use the engine even like, not only that, but it will also push your shadow structure deck because let's be real, the best light target for construct to fuse with is Damage uh, Juggler because you will get your search. Graph at three, yes, this is one thing that people might be might feel a little bit iffy about, but I think Graph is the best burning abyss to bring back at three. Not Seer. Seer could come back at three, but it's a bit weird with the Dante Seer loop. It it becomes very very irritating when you play against the deck. Graph is kind of the starter of the deck. It helps you get to Beatrice. It helps you get more advantage out of your deck. It helps you get to your Skarm so you can get your searches. I think Graph is the best card you can put back at three. Don't think, don't even think about putting Beatrice back to three. Beatrice is still going to be forever one of the best kind of disruptions ever. So I think at one is perfect. Graph just helps the deck be more consistent. And Book of Moon at three. Book of Moon is a card that doesn't see play at all, even if it's at one. If it was a good card, it would see play even if at one. So putting it to three doesn't change anything. The only deck I can think of playing Book of Moon as kind of a disruptive or an offensive play is Sky Striker because it's kind of like a disruption. That's a spell, so you can have more spells in your grave. So I think that's the only deck that could even think about running a card like Book of Moon in today's meta where links are dominating. So, yeah. That's my list. I think it's it's not a big list. It doesn't have to be a big list. If Konami wanted to push those mediocre decks they keep printing, they would have to hit like 10 different decks because even if you butcher everything I mentioned here completely, then what's going to happen? Like I'm going to have to Draco, we're going to have Pendulums, we're going to have Alter Guys, we're going to have Subterrors. All these decks that are not as good right now, they're just be better. because So there's no way to make mediocre decks like Adik Nister, Marinces, and unchained meta it's just not going to happen and people think the meta is stale but that's the only the, the balance can't fix that no matter what happens the same format is going to go on until the next list and until the next list and that's going to happen again and again and again until konami actually decides to print a really good new deck so it can overtake the meta so take this with a grain of salt think of what deck you want to play during the next format because konami will probably think of a way to make even more decks uh, viable because the only way to hide their disability to bring a new deck is by increasing variety in the format. So yeah, that's the video guys. Thanks for watching. Leave us your, com leave us in your comments, your thoughts. What do you think is going to happen? What do you think should happen to change the format? Not just boundless wise, but anything wise. And yep, yeah, like the video, subscribe to our channel if you want to see more. Leave us your suggestions, what you want to see, and we'll see you next time.